Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today we will talk about inertial frame references. Now, this is a, well, kind of philosophical concept in physics, and uh, it requires lots of explanation, which I will try to um, to offer you uh, as, as much as I can. Um, now, this uh, uh, particular lecture is part of the course called Physics 14 on Unizor.com. And if you go to um, this website and uh, navigate to this particular lecture, uh, you will see very detailed explanation of whatever I'm talking right now, maybe even better than whatever I'm talking. Well, and obviously all other lectures have very detailed notes, so I do suggest you to watch this lecture from this website. site is free, by the way, and it has no advertising, so all open for all. Now, so, um, let's talk about inertial frames of reference. First of all, what is a frame of reference? It's just a system of, system of coordinates. Um, in most of the cases, I will use a Cartesian system of uh, coordinates, and that's why it's Cartesian frame of reference, and I will interchangeably use the term frame or frame of reference and system of coordinates the shortest one is a frame, right? So we will try to use the short one. So um, now let's talk about position um, uh, of any object uh, as it moves. Position we usually um, describe by position functions, right? So we have three position functions. It's coordinates in some system of coordinates in some frame of reference as functions of the time t. So whenever we are talking about some numerical characteristic of the position, we are implying that there is certain system of coordinates, certain frame of reference relative to which the position is basically defined. Now sometimes we don't really Im uh, explicitly specify this. We implicitly um, kind of understand what this actually is. Just for example, if the car moves along a straight road um, and we are saying, okay, the speed of the car is, let's say, 70 uh, kilometers per hour. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that we are considering certain system of coordinates um, where the origin is probably on that road, the, let's say, x-axis goes along this road, y and z are perpendicular uh, to each other, and they're always equal to zero, since this is a straight road, and we are measuring the position x-coordinate in this system as a function of time t, and the first derivative of this x of t function, which is the speed, is actually 70 kilometers per hour. So we are implying that there is such a coordinate system. It doesn't mean that our um, car moves at uh, speed 70 kilometers per hour in some absolute sense. There is no absolute sen sense because the car is on the Earth. Earth is uh, rotating around the Sun. Sun is rotating around some center of the galaxy, etc., etc. So everything is moving. So, it's very important to specify what exactly the coordinate system we are talking about when we are talking about numerical characteristic of the position. Now, just as an example, if you have certain coordinate system and you have um, functions of position equals to this. So at time t is equal to zero, we are in the beginning, in the origin. And then as the time increases, we are moving along the uh, x-axis with increasing, quadratically increasing uh, uh, of time speed. y and z are equal to zero. Okay, fine. Now let's have another system of coordinates. So 
system of coordinates which I suggest is 3, 0, and minus 5. So it's somewhere minus 5. It's here. So 0 and minus 5. So how can I? It's somewhere here. All right? Now, and from this point, I also have a coordinate system with axes parallel to uh, my original one. So let's call it, call it U, V, W. Now, if the law of the motion is as described here in this particular system, and I consider a different system with origin at point 3, 0, minus 5. Now, what would be the functions which describe the position in this system? Well, obviously, that would be u of t, which is equal to... Now, it used to be t squared, but now we are shifted by 3 along the x-axis, so it should be t squared minus 3, right? So if the point is here, and this is my x coordinate. Now this is my u coordinate, which is by 3 less, right? Now y coordinate did not change because I have 0 here, right? So it would be 0 as well. And z coordinate, since I moved my whole um, uh, system of coordinate down by 5, so it used to be z0, but now if my system is moved down by 5, z would be equal to 5, all this. So we have a completely different system of uh, positional functions because we have changed the uh, frame of reference. Change of coordinate system causes change of the equation of motion, right? So it's very important I just wanted to show again how important it is to always specify the system of coordinates we're talking about. Again, sometimes it's implied, like in the case of the car moving along the straight line, but sometimes you really have to explicitly say in which uh, frame of reference your um, equations are actually true. So, it would be nice if we had one and only absolute frame of reference, which is absolutely immovable, Im it, it doesn't change with the time, it just stands still in time, and all our motions, all our coordinates will be relative to this absolute um, coordinate system, absolute frame of reference. Well, alas, there is no such absolute frame of reference because everything is somehow moving somewhere uh, relative to something uh, in with, with some kind of a direction speed etc etc as i was saying before we are on the surface of the earth earth moves around its own axis around sun sun is moving around the galaxy center etc etc et so everything is moving there is no such thing as an absolute frame of reference however well, for our modest needs, we can assume actually that there is um, a system which is related to stars. Let's say we just uh, position a couple of stars in some way. You see, stars relative to Earth are so far away that they basically seem like immovable, right? They are standing still. We all know they are not standing still, we all know that the Earth is moving, etc. But within the limitation of our precision, whatever we require for our experiments, we can always assume that the stars are really not moving anywhere. And we can tie our coordinate system, our frame of reference, with immovable stars and consider this as the, well, almost absolute uh, frame of reference. Now, now we are talking about inertia. First of all, what is inertia? Inertia is the property of the object to continue, well, in philosophical sense, to continue doing whatever it's doing without changes. In physical sense, inertia 
is actually the continuation of movement of, of movement in exactly the same fashion as it was before which means if the um, object was uh, at rest it will be at rest if it moves in certain direction with a certain speed it will always move in the same direction with the same speed that's what basically inertia is now we by the way we know that movement um, uh, in, in, in the same direction with the same speed, which means velocity vector is the same, is called uniform motion. So inertia is very much related to uniform motion. And even the stay of, uh, state of rest can be also called a uniform motion with the velocity vector equals to zero, right? All right, so we are talking about uniform motion. Now, Let's recall our almost absolute um, system of coordinate related to star, what's called star-based frame of reference. And let's consider a comet which flies somewhere in the space far from the uh, solar system, far from other solar systems, uh, in vacuum. So the gravity is mm, very very low within our precision we consider that there is no gravity there are no any other objects which are actually force the comet to change its course so what happens with this comet well within this frame of reference related to star our comet would probably move um, in a uniform motion and our experiments actually suggest that that's exactly the case so our star-based um, frame of reference has this very important property that the object, let's say a comet or anything, if it, if it does not experience any kind of external forces or would be more precisely to say if the forces are uh, non-existence non-existent or maybe they are balanced to each other well if you have two forces against each other it's like they're nullifying each other so if there is no unbalanced force <coughs> then our object will will be moving in a uniform motion fashion so this is basically the law of inertia that the object at rest will stay at rest the object in uniform motion will continue the same uniform motion uh, in the absence of unbalanced forces. Now, we didn't talk about any kind of system of, system of coordinates here, right? Well, it's implied actually that we consider that there is some absolute system and obviously we're talking about something like a star-based um, system which is almost um, uh, absolute in our sense. So relative to this system, if the object was uh, uh, in the state of rest, it will be at rest. It if it was in the state of uh, um, uniform motion, it will continue this uniform motion. The, the velocity will be exactly the same. So we have at least one star-based, in this case, uh, frame of reference and we have this law of inertia which we basically well considering our experiments we postulate it it's our axiom so there is an axiom which is called law of inertia the, 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 the body will not change its velocity uh, unless you have some unbalanced forces relative to this star based system and because we have um, postulated this particular law of inertia, we call this star-based um, uh, frame of reference, we call it inertial, inertial frame of reference. Well, inertial frame of reference is the frame of reference where the law of inertia is true, all right? Or we have basically postulated. Now, we found one, that particular system, that star-based, and we found this uh, we postulated this law of inertia. That's good. However, to to work with this particular uh, system is very difficult. Obviously, I mean, just consider you have this very 
abstract kind of a system of reference, system of coordinates, and it's very difficult to to basically numerically explain the movement of something in terms of these functions if it's related to some stars. I mean, the numbers would be crazy, and etc. So, it's not convenient, and what do we do? And here is what we do. Now I'm going to prove a theorem, actually, that if you have one particular inertial uh, frame of reference, then there are infinite number of others, and I will show you how to construct these other um, frames of reference, which are also inertial in the sense that the law of inertia is true. If it's true in one system of coordinates, then I will construct the infinite number of other systems of, re uh, systems of reference, systems of coordinates, which are much more convenient to work with, which are also inertial, where the law of inertia is true. Now, how do I do it? Here it is. <coughs> so, let's assume that we have an XYZ frame and it's inertial. Well, for instance, it's our star-based system, right? We know it's inertial because it's an axiom, right? Now, let's consider another frame, uh, U, V, W frame. Now, this frame is moving relative to XYZ frame uniformly. What does it mean? Well, it means that if this is one system and this is another system, then this is, let's say, vector Q0. That's vector from the origin to origin. So this is XYZ. This is U, V, W. Now, what we are talking about moving uniformly, it means that from this initial position, this um, coordinate systems, system moves in certain direction. Let's say this is the vector. And this is the velocity of moving of this particular um, point, the origin of the new system. It's moving with a velocity vector omega in some direction. And the omega is constant. So in this particular origin of the new system, from its initial position, which is characterized by vector q0 in the old system, it moves along certain um, vector omega, uh, which characterizes the direction and the, and the speed, basically, in, in that direction, then I am actually um, stating that this new system of coordinates will also be inertial if XYZ is inertial. And it's actually very easy to prove. Now, how the um, movement of any particular point, let's say this point, is described in this XYZ system, I will put a P X Y Z of T. That's the vector which is now this is in this particular frame this is uniform motion. So I assume that this is a uniform motion which means it's uh, T times velocity plus some kind of a beginning position, right? So if my object initially at point T0 is at this position and moves with constant velocity V in the XYZ system, then this would be coordinate at point T in this system. Now, what would be the position of this same object, this same position, expressed in 
this other, the new um, system of coordinates. Well, this is the vector, and you know the rules for addition of the vectors. So if you have a vector, and then you have these vectors, then some of these vectors is this one, right? Some of these two is this, and some of this and this is this. That's the rules for vector addition. So I can say that the vector from here to here is equal to vector from here to here. That's initial position of uh, our origin, of new origin. Then, during the time t, my origin moved to point to this one, right? My new coordinate system is moving. So during the time t, it moves along um, this uh, vector omega from initial position, which is q0, to, to which position? Well, origin will move here, which is t times omega, right? It's the same thing, basically, as here, because we are talking about uniform mo motion of this point of origin. So it's basically the same kind of a formula. But the vector is omega. That's the vector how my new uh, system of coordinate is moving. Now, what is the coordinate of the same point in this new position of the new UVW frame of reference? Well, that would be from here to here, and it has certain coordinates which are P, U, V, W of T. So that's my new coordinate. That's my new coordinate of the same point in the new system of coordinates. So if the old uh, position, uh, if the old um, system of reference gave me this formula, the new gives me this formula. So basically they are equal, because my position, because the object is in the same point. This is coordinate of this point in this coordinate system, which is shifted by this from the origin, and origin itself was shifted by Q, Q, Q0. And this is the same position in my um, old system. Fine. This is basically the conversion from old to new or from new to old, whatever it is. Omega and Q0 are constants. This is initial position of my uh, UVW frame of reference. This is a constant. Omega is a constant velocity. My UVW frame of reference is moving within XYZ, uh, within the old XYZ system. And this is the new coordinates uh, of the same point in the, from the new position of the UVW uh, frame of reference. Okay, that's good. Now, let's differentiate it. Because these are positions, right? So the derivative of position is velocity. And whenever we are talking about uniform motion, we really have to watch the velocity. It's supposed to be constant. Well, let's do it. If we differentiate, this is a constant. This differentiation gives me omega. Differentiation by t. This would be from the position I go to velocity. U, V, W of t. And this would be velocity of x, y, z frame. So what does it mean? It means that if this is constant, this is constant, because this is constant. So whenever we are talking about one uh, frame of reference moving uniformly relative to inertial system, the movement will be, u will be uniform in another um, uh, system of coordinates as well. So now, X, Y, Z, I can always say this is my old-fashioned star-based system. So, if my system of coordinates, this one, is moving uniformly relative to my stars, then since the stars are 
um, inertial frame of reference. My this system also is inertial frame of reference. Now, for example, if you have a system of coordinate which is fixed on Earth, and Earth is moving, well, obviously it's not moving along a straight line, so I can't really say it's really uniform movement. But within certain um, practical uh, precision, it is relatively uniform movement, and we don't really we don't really feel that there is something uh, like acceleration towards something, etc. So, within certain um, degree of precision, we can assume that um, uh, the uh, movement within within the Earth is basically uh, the movement within some kind of a um, inertial frame of reference. The point was that you can always um, invent some kind of a inertial frame of reference which is convenient for your particular problem based on this property. So that's why we will assume that we always deal in, in cases of uniform motion whenever we are talking about uniform motion we are actually talking about uniform motion either relative to our star-based system or relative to some maybe implied, maybe explicitly specified system of coordinates, um, which is also um, inertial. Why do we need it? Well, because we need the law of inertia. Law of inertia guides basically the um, uh, the behavior of uh, the uh, objects which are uniformly moving. So we expect that if I have a uniform movement, then it will continue to be uniform movement indefinitely. I kind of assume that the law of inertia is true and that's how I can make some kind of calculations. So that's why I'm saying that V is constant. That's why I know that it exists this particular kind of mo mo motion. The motion with a constant velocity and we call it uniform motion. So that's what's very important and um, now, as, as you saw, there are lots of explanation and there are a lot of approximation. We, we don't really have ideal, absolute um, inertial system, inertial system of reference. But within certain precision, we can always say that the star-based coordinate system is inertial and any system which is uh, uniformly moves relative to the stars at least within certain narrow maybe time period. I mean, yes, Earth, for instance, is, is rotating around its own axis, right? But if our experiment takes, let's say, a couple of seconds, then this movement is so insignificant that we can say that basically the Earth, relative to these um, uh, immovable stars, also at rest. And that's why we can use this particular uh, system of reference for our own experiments, whatever our experiments are. That's basically the, the bottom line of this inertial system. But again, I can definitely tell you there is no absolutely 100% inertial systems. Everything is moving somewhere. But with a certain degree of precision, we can always assume that we are choosing the reasonably inertial um, uh, frames of reference. And most of the problems actually which we will, will, will be dealing with, most of these problems will also be related to certain properties of the object moving within inertial um, frames of reference. Maybe implying, not necessarily explicitly specifying, okay, this is my system of coordinates or frame of reference. No, sometimes it's just impl implicitly specified, which is fine as well. All right, now I do urge you to, to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com because maybe something is, is explained a little bit mm, in more details because I was actually trying to, to put the notes almost like a, basically a, as a textbook for this particular lecture. So good luck. Thank you very much. That's it.